Human sacrifice, genocide, treason, poverty, disease, imprisonment, rape, and mutiny are just a few of the things that we would never want our poor children to be exposed to. However, how would you feel if I told you that we have been singing nursery rhymes for hundreds of years that were born out of these god-awful atrocities and many school systems today still teach them? With that said, there are 10 nursery rhymes and their dark, disturbing histories. 10. London Bridge is Falling Down London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady Set a man to watch all night, watch all night, watch all night. Set a man to watch all night, my fair lady. Suppose the man should fall asleep, fall asleep, fall asleep. Suppose the man shall fall asleep, my fair lady. There are several theories behind the origin of this rhyme, but the one that really stands out is the one about human sacrifice. It was believed that a bridge would collapse unless the human sacrifice was buried at the foundations. The practice is called immormant, which is the practice of entombing someone within a structure where they slowly die from lack of food and water. Number 9. Mary Mary Quite Contrary Mary Mary Quite Contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells, and pretty maids all in a row. The Mary referred to in this rhyme is Mary the First, daughter of Henry the Eighth and his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Henry the Eighth wanted to marry Anna Bolin and petitioned the Catholic Church for a divorce time and time again, which was refused. So, he isolated himself from the Catholic Church and created the Anglican Church. As a result of this, England was, at the time of Mary's reign, divided between Catholics and Protestants. When Mary came to throne, she wanted to convert England to Catholicism again, going contrary to England's wishes at the time. Her short reign from 1553 to 1558 was marked thus by the execution of thousands of Protestants. The silver bells and cockle shells are torture devices from her time, and the pretty maids all in a row are referred to the hundreds of women burnt at the stake for the crime of being Protestant. Number 8. Three Blind Mice Three blind mice, three blind mice, see how they run, see how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife, who cut off their tails with a carving knife. Did you ever see such a thing in your life as three blind mice? This is another rhyme dedicated to Mary the First Reign, also known as Bloody Mary. The three mice are believed to be a trio of Protestant bishops, Hugh Latimer, Nicholas Radley, and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer, who conspired to overthrow Mary. They were obviously unsuccessful, and were found out and then burnt at the stake. For treason and heresy, it was mistakenly believed that she also blinded and dismembered them, as the rhyme goes, as if being burnt alive wasn't enough. Number 7, Jack and Jill Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. The roots of this poem are so dark that they should not be allowed anywhere near children. Jack and Jill are actually Francis Louis XVI and his wife Mary Antoinette. 
who were convicted of treason during the French Revolution, otherwise known as the Reign of Terror, and beheaded Jack or Louis XVI, lost his crown, i.e. his throne and his head, and Jill or Marie Antoinette's head soon came tumbling after. Number 6. Ring Around the Rosie Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. The origin of this rhyme is by far the most infamous. The rhyme refers to the Great Plague of London in 1665. The rose from the rhyme is the rash that covered the ones who contracted the disease, the smell of which they tried to cover up with a pocket full of posies. The ashes were the cremated remains of the deceased, and, well, they all fell down. Number 5. Ba Ba Black Sheep Ba Ba Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame, and one for the little boy who lives down the lane. While this rhyme sounds innocent enough, it actually dates back to feudal England and is not so innocent. There was an extremely harsh wool tax imposed on the farmers back then by King Edward I in the 13th century. One third of the wool was taken for the king or the master, one third for the church or the dame, and one third for the farmers. Some older versions of this rhyme ended with, but none for the little boy who cries down the lane, showing us just how little was left for the people who cultivated the wool. Number 4. Old Mother Hubbard Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her poor doggy a bone. When she got there, the cupboard was bare. Old Mother Hubbard isn't even a woman. If the theories are to be believed, Old Mother Hubbard is actually Cardinal Woolsey from 16th century England. Once a very powerful member of the clergy, he found himself in Henry VIII's bad books because he was unable to get him the divorce from Catherine that he so badly wanted. So King Henry is the doggy, and the divorce is the bone, and the cupboard is the Catholic Church, which straight up refused Henry his divorce force resulting in England's separation from the church. Number 3. Goosey Goosey Gander Goosey Goosey Gander, whither dost thou wander, upstairs and downstairs, and in my lady's chamber, there I met an old man who wouldn't say his prayers. I took him by the left leg and threw him down the stairs. After England turned Protestant, following King Henry VIII's creation of the Anglican Church, there were plenty of Catholic priests who refused to follow the Protestant faith. So, to avoid punishment, they set up small rooms in their homes called priest holes to pray in. If they were found praying in Latin, as the Catholics do, they would be thrown down the stairs or put to death. Number 2. Here we go around the mulberry bush. Here we go around the mulberry bush. The mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go around the mulberry bush so early in the morning. We all sung this as kids in school, not really knowing who was going around the mulberry bush. Historian R.S. Duncan, who was also the warden of England's Wakefield Prison, wrote that this song's origin lies in the practice of female inmates singing this, who were being exercised around a mulberry bush. In other words, they were being sentenced to death. And finally, number one, Georgie Porgy Pudding in Pie. Georgie Porgy Pudding in Pie kissed the girls and made them cry. When the boys came out to play, Georgie Porgy ran away.
George Villiers, Duke of Beckingham, who was rumored to be King James I's lover, while there is no proof of this relationship, it was evident that King James was very fond of Villiers, who was given a lot of money and titles. Villiers' good looks are very well documented, though, along with this, his lust for women. It is said that Villiers earned the wrath of several husbands whose wives he had sex with, who did not always consent to it. We get why the girls cried and why Georgie Porgy ran away when the boys came out to play. That concludes our first episode of Dark Histories. I'm the Voice of Nightmares, and I hope to see you all again. Plus, tell me what you think in the comments below. Also, before I forget, all of this information was given by www.vegabomb.com.